Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a uh, Wednesday night. Almost Friday. I was going to say Friday night, but uh, Wednesday night, 9.44 p.m. local time, California time, April 23rd, 2025 is the date. Latest activity shows a little point nine, not a nine magnitude, but a little point nine there across California. Also, some other movement going on there up the coast around uh, the northern California area. So let's go ahead and take a look here, see what we got. Uh, a little bit of movement at the southern end here of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. It looks like it's just off the plate boundary there for a 4.2 earthquake, six miles deep. A little bit of a newer activity stirring up here uh, across the area this evening. Uh, on that note, I do want to double check, see what we got for the trimmer activity there. A trimmer plays a, a big part on what's going on there across the Cascadia subduction zone. It looks like we got 106 epicenters of trimmer there at the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So that could be why we're seeing a little bit of a uh, elevated strain out there uh, with tonight's earthquake, that 4.2 earthquake striking out there. Now, looks like there's two on the map. Uh, I only think there was one, but occasionally the USGS and the EMSC model uh, disagree with each other. So therefore it'll show two earthquakes there. But uh, as far as I know, there was only one earthquake and that was, again, just about two hours ago. Well off the coast of Northern California, but a little bit of an uptick going on here after a couple days of quietness across the West Coast. San Francisco, pretty quiet. Still waiting on some activity to stir up out here. Been, uh, it's been awfully quiet. Not uh, Probably not a good thing. Uh, further down the line, Southern California, just off the San Andreas Fault here near the San Bernardino National Forest. Got a little swarm going on here with a couple earthquakes of uh, some very small microquake magnitudes there. 1.4 and a couple other smaller quakes. But uh, we are starting to light up out here in the last couple hours. So we'll be on guard here for, you know, anything that happens. Obviously, we are on the, uh, on the uh, menu, so to speak, for some larger earthquake activity. I don't know if that's a, the best wording uh, for it, but uh, we are definitely, uh, I would say we're overdue here for some larger activity across the West Coast. Some smaller movement here across the Long Valley Super Volcano as well. That is just outside the caldera, which sits right up here. Um, so not, uh, not unusual to see some earthquake activity out there. <coughs> a handful of smaller quakes, that is. Uh, further up into the Intermountain West area, a little bit of earthquake activity in Wyoming once again, 3.5. That came in after this morning's update. Uh, I looked at this, and uh, I guess, and, and a couple other folks there mentioned uh, this area as well. There's some type of uh, uh, facility out here, some type of um, mining company, very close to this earthquake uh, that struck and it's just one of the latest earthquakes that have been ongoing out here across this area of Wyoming but it looks like it could be mining related uh, but it sits awfully close there uh, to the epicenter of that uh, earthquake that struck there this morning uh, for a 3.5 and if we were to go back the last couple months this area has been uh, actually quite active in terms of earthquake activity this is just the last 30 days so uh, continue to keep an eye on that. Obviously, the North American plate is under continuous strain. And, um, you know, I think any type of mining activities can uh, lead to some further earthquake activity uh, when things are amplified out here. Nothing going on there across Yellowstone National Park for now. Uh, but I do want to double check that. See if we have anything interesting to look at here on the map. Um, wow, all right. We have a little bit of interesting earthquake activity there across Grant Village, a little west of them. Um, nothing big, but uh, as you can see there, a handful of very small earthquakes. And that could be a sign of the uh, overall pressure out here against the North American plate, right? We're seeing earthquake activity down south. Uh, west Coast has now shown elevated earthquake activity. And we're getting these little small microquakes up there across Yellowstone National Park. So that's an overall a general sign there of increasing pressure, right? As more pressure increases, obviously earthquake activity is going to increase. But those are very small, very small earthquakes. Um, probably below the 1.5 threshold. 
and one earthquake up here around Mary Lake as well. Uh, USGS will probably not get to them as far as reporting any of the earthquakes that are taking place up there unless they're, uh, you know, unless it's of importance. But, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, they they never report the smaller quakes. Uh, let's see, Texas area, oh, a whole bunch of oil-filled earthquakes out here. There's a, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch. Check this out here on the satellite view. There's a... Literally thousands and thousands of these oil fields out here, oil wells and wastewater disposal ponds there. Whole process involved, but if you zoom in, you can, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist here. These are definitely uh, some oil wells out there. I've driven through this area numerous times, and uh, there's there's a lot of liquid gold out there, and also earthquakes. That will continue. Occasionally, we can get earth quakes there in the oil fields up to um, oh, mid fives uh, fortunately for now just some smaller quake activity in the two and one range new madrid seismic zone pretty quiet nothing showing up there across the east coast far as worldwide activity goes um you know this movement there across northern california is just a sign here that we may be seeing things return out here across the west coast as far as elevated activity we'll keep an eye on that overnight also, a decent swarm of earthquake activity down across the Peru-Chile Trench. The latest of 4.2 and a, looks like a 5-pointer down there as well. USGS reporting one of those many earthquakes down there. Uh, but we do have a, a decent amount. That's actually, uh, a, you know, a decent amount of aftershock activity if that is indeed the original primary quake of 5.1. But this area north of Santiago, Chile... Uh, can easily produce mega quakes out there. Of course, down south here, uh, the 1961, the Great Chilean earthquake there, the 9.0 uh, is a 9.5, largest earthquake ever recorded there. So this area of the Peru Chile Trench can get some big time earthquakes. We'll watch that because that's actually a lot of earthquake activity there for just a five pointer. This could very well be four shocks to something in that area. Along the Peru Chile Trench, a couple of earthquakes out there. Really nothing major going on, just some twos and occasional three. The Atlantic Ocean looks uh, awfully quiet there for now. Still seeing some aftershock sequences there across that area of Turkey. Following this morning, 6.2 earthquake struck out there. Decent sized earthquake for sure. Number of uh, fours and fives out there following that main quake. That's very common. That should eventually die off there, but uh, a decent sized earthquake. Very shallow movement as well. Uh, the rest of the area out here, Japan, um, a number of smaller quakes up there. Really nothing of any major movement for now, but we, do we definitely have to keep an eye there on the Nankai Trough. Uh, Philippines has uh, calmed down a little bit after seeing a bunch of activity here recently. Some more broad spread out activity here across the java trench new zealand uh quiet for now Got a little bit of movement stirring up there in hawaii as well so i do want to double check that see what's going on out there uh, a little swarm out here south of the summit area um the summit region up here kilauea volcano uh, crater area but we do have a little bit of movement down south here with a couple twos. Very deep earthquake activity, though. 18 miles or so underneath that area. Uh, but as far as the eruption goes there in Hawaii, well, that's currently on a pause, I believe. Let's just double-check that. Uh, as of, uh, this is from yesterday, it came to a pause there about 1.28 p.m. And, of course, we should be going up, right, on the inflation chart that I've been showing you guys here for quite a while and it looks like we are um, rebounded pretty good there there's the uh, eruption large amount of volume of uh, volume ma of magma there from the area below uh, but it didn't last long but uh, it depleted quite nicely seen some uh, beautiful fountain going on there across the Kilauea volcano now we're rebounding up this is the inflation right here and that uh, you know, it could be anywhere from about four to five days of inflation or like we've seen last time here. That was a fairly lengthy one. Uh, but we'll continue to check back on that. Either way, a little pause in the excitement out there across the big island of Hawaii. As far as space weather activity goes, uh, looking at uh, 
a number of sunspots out here that are currently facing the earth and that it looks pretty active out there right look at that all that that is a uh, fairly hefty amount of sunspots but we could literally have hundreds of sunspots facing the earth here but if they look like this you know these uh areas of very you know not a whole lot of complexity then they're not going to do anything uh, so I am not seeing anything of any major value out here for strong solar flares. Uh, this area, yeah, 4064, even up here looks like it's just kind of dying out a little bit. Um, you know, goodness, you're probably going to have to twist my arm a couple times to make me pick one. Because I am, I'm, man, maybe this one back over here. There's a uh, sunspot way out in the northeastern limb there that looks a little bit more active than the ones that are currently facing us. So uh, really a very small threat for flaring activity. I'm, I'm issuing a 1% chance or less for X flare. These guys showing 5%, uh, 40 to 50% chance for an M flare of that. But uh, really not expecting anything for now. Uh, far as the far side watch here, let's see if they've updated these maps. They haven't. Still four days it's been down. So I'm not for sure what's up, but we'll uh, check back on that, I guess. Uh, no major roars there in the forecast. That G2 class storm there that was issued for a number of nights in a row, pretty much a dud. Storm Prediction Center out here for severe weather on the surface of the planet. Still got a uh, slight risk here overnight. Looks like, uh, well, yeah, this is early morning, overnight, early morning there across texas and oklahoma portions of kansas as well got a tornado threat mostly wind wind hello wind there we go wind and some hail threats out there um, looking at the extended model model run here uh, let's see what we got here for the day four to eight outlook these guys are a little bit choppy here it's not me i'm still running solid uh, but it looks like there's day five day six yeah, day six, a fairly huge area for uh, a 15% chance for some severe weather out there. That's fairly, um, that's an extensive zone there. It looks like maybe something serious brewing out here as we head towards day six, day seven. That's going to be Monday and Tuesday of next week. So watch for that. Could be some severe weather out there across that area. All right, uh, let's see. Real quick glance here at California. Like I said, we'll just kind of keep an eye on things here. Things are starting to move around a little bit uh, here in the last couple hours with that quake there off northern California coast. And, uh, you know, it it goes quiet for a little bit, but it doesn't stay quiet for long. Um, yeah, not a whole lot happening in Southern California. Just a tad bit here in the last hour or so. 2.6 up here in the Garlock Fault Shear Zone. That area has been quite active, more so recently than uh, than I recall in quite a long time. And that plays a major part in what's going on here across the plate boundary. You got the strain interaction between the two plates. This is a shear zone. It's exactly what it sounds like, a shear zone. Uh, and that kind of acts as a spring, so to speak, across this area. And that's been acting... Uh, well, it's been showing a lot of elevated earthquake activity out here. And this is just the past 30 days. 166 earthquakes. Uh, really no main quake. You know, we've seen that uh, uh, three, uh, two point, what is it, 2.6 today. But also a number of threes out there in the last 30 days as well. So just, uh, you know, keep an eye on Southern California. It's, I think a lot of us have been watching it here closely recently. And uh, we just got to be on guard, folks. I'm out of here. I'm tired. Been uh, outside doing a lot of yard work here in uh, my neck of the woods. So I'm going to call it a night. Hope everyone out there enjoys their evening. We'll see you guys back out here for the, uh, the Thursday morning update.